thanks thank for taking the time to join us. No, thank you. Um, for those of us in the room maybe that aren't familiar with everything that you've done, could you um, maybe introduce yourself and fill us in? Uh, I haven't done much, but my, my real name's Mark. Everyone calls me Mala, nickname from when I was younger. Um, I set up a, a record label with a couple of friends back in 2004 now. Uh, the label's called DMZ. Um, I set up with two of my friends, Koki and Lofa. Um, from having the record label, there was nowhere to play the music, so that's why we set up our night. Since then, I set up another label because I was getting sent so much music by people around the world, um, and I found myself kind of in a position where I was able to maybe get other people's music to be listened to, um, and that's really why I started up my Deep Medi label. Um, uh, through producing music, um, I got asked to play music, so that's why I play my music out. It was never an intention to become a DJ or anything like that. Um, that's kind of what I've done, I guess, briefly over the last few years. How long have you been making music for? Um, I started making music probably about 99, 2000, and that was mucking around with one of my friends. He had a laptop, which he had Fruity Loops on. Uh, he, his laptop was so, like, messed up, we couldn't actually save anything on there. So we just used to, like, write music all night, and then we'd record it onto tape cassette, and then that would be the tune, and then the next day we'd, you know, do the same thing. Um, but it wasn't really until about 2000 and... Well, I got, the, I got the first, I got the music program, Reason, and I found that when I got the program, Reason, it kind of changed everything in my production because I found that the translation from whatever was in my mind, I could quickly kind of like lay it down and get it out. And I think as a producer um, or, you know, anybody creative, it's sometimes you can be bogged down by like the technical side of things and that can obviously stop the flow of like creation. So for me, using a program like Reason at that time just felt really natural. Um, so yeah, from using Reason in, 2002 is when I kind of decided that I was going to buy um, a good pair of studio monitors because I was just using kind of like my hi-fi monitors before that. And yeah, so 2002 is when I decided to take like writing music seriously, really. Do you consider the music that you make dubstep? I don't really consider it anything a lot of the time because a lot of the time I don't really like. It's I don't like. It's not like I really make something in and I spend like ages listening to it mm. after it's made. And a lot of the time when I'm writing stuff, um, yeah, you kind of I kind of have like doubts about what I do anyway. So I don't really call it dubstep or anything. But I guess generally it's called dubstep mm. because of you know media and the 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 kind of need that. <laughs> Society seems to have to put everything in a box or on a shelf, you know. Can you talk to me about the influence of, of dub itself on you as a, as a human and also as a musician? Yeah, I think um, my first experience of like dub really was listening to like Jungle. Because yeah. I think Jungle really is just like a London dub in a sense. You know, the techniques that a lot of the guys are using with the delays and the reverbs and stuff. Um, and the s certain space in certain tracks, you know, it wasn't like kind of like gnarly basses. A lot of it was that space between like the higher frequencies and then there's like this gap and then you've got like the sub low frequencies. So when I was growing up listening to Jungle kind of and hardcore like 92, 92, 93, 94 was the, was the year really like Jungle was, they made certain tunes that no one's ever going to be able to kind of like recreate. Just like listening to those frequencies like day in, day out, because yeah, that definitely was the music that kind of changed my way of thinking about sound. Because before then, you know, <coughs> you listen to like Shabba Ranks or whatever, you know. Um, but then when I listened to, to Jungle, it was kind of like, it's coming from a different place, I felt. And it kind of totally related to the environment that I was surrounded by. So for a youngster, that was kind of like a bit of a, you know, it was a really big thing. I've known Koki since I was about 11, and, and Pokes as well. We used to go to the same school, so we was always listening to music together. 
as well as like playing football and other things like that. Lothar I met when I was 15, going on 16, through some other friends. But we just had a, a kind of like, just I guess a lot of people do with their friends, you know what I mean? Your common thing is that you all love this music and then from that you find that you may be like-minded in other ways. Um, so yeah, really what we, really what we've done to me feels like an extension of of our bedrooms really, because we all used to meet up and jam jungle tapes together. So it's just an extension of that. So DMZ was started by the three of you? Yeah, that's right. And it was almost as much of a reaction as to hearing stuff that you didn't like and, and wanting to put on a, a dance where you could just hear only the music that was right for you. Well, yeah, at that time, because you, know, you might remember yourself, there was a certain time in London where you could go out every night and there was good stuff happening. And it got to a point I think, where I couldn't go out in London because everything just seemed to be stale. Um, so, yeah, I guess that was us reacting to, you know, our circumstances in life. Mm -hmm. And um, does this coincide with the first Digital Mystics release? Yeah, our first Digital Mystics release was in 2003 on Big Apple Records mm -hmm. after Hatcher started playing a track called Pathways that I made, which is kind of... Have you got something from that era? Yeah, it's kind of terrible though, man. <laughs> um, I can play something early. So DMZ is a label and a club night, yeah. and Digital Mystics is me and Koki. you and Koki producing yeah. together. Yeah, it's kind of mad, because only really in the, early, in the early stages did we produce together. And then I guess, you know, as you get older, kind of like, like your life and your circumstances can kind of change, you know, people have families and yeah. people have other work commitments and things like that as well. So we've always had our own studios. Um, but yeah, when we listened to our music together, we always thought that the sound was like Digital Mystics. That's really what we thought our style of music was, digital, and it had the kind of mystical kind of tones going on with it as well. So that's why we called ourselves uh, Digital Mystics, but we were called something else before. What was that? It's kind of, we called ourselves Mawo, right? Because I'm Mala, and he, Koki's name that people don't call him, but we call him is Wobbler. This goes back to a long story involving drinking quite a bit of Guinness, but um, yeah, we called him Wobbler, so it was Mala and Wobbler, Mawo. But yeah, when we looked on the internet, actually, I looked on the internet to see if the name had been taken. Yeah. And um, this is just before we were going to sign a big Apple record because we didn't know what to put on the title of the record. And um, yeah, it was some, I think it was like s some kind of like trance producer was called Mawo. So we thought, now we forget that. And then, yeah, we was listening to Rinse FM, drinking a Guinness. We used, to, we used to sit at the end of a road in drink a Guinness and, you know what I mean, maybe smoke a spliff or whatever and listen to kind of like Hatcher or Youngstore and Rinse FM.